Thank you, Kalat. Um, uh, welcome, everyone. Um, we appreciate you uh, joining us today. And uh, as I normally do, uh, I will uh, I will request everyone to come with their uh, questions uh, in the chat box window as soon as they have them. Don't wait for questions to come at the end of the session. Uh, uh, we may not be able to take if the questions come up at the end of the session. But if you do it during the session um, as going on, we can either address the question while we are we are speaking. Uh, we can take care of that, or uh, at the end uh, when we specifically address uh, audience questions. With this, uh, let me start with uh, uh, with today's uh, webinar. You know, we are talking about AI in retail industry. Uh, you know, we have been doing this AI series uh, in the past. We have done few of them, uh, uh, you know, in last about 10 days or so. And uh, we're going to do a few more this week and maybe next week. Um, we always believe that uh, AI is, is something which is uh, going to change the way uh, we have seen how the business is done. Uh, it will, will do a lot. Uh, it will it will influence the industry a lot, and there are a few industry which will be more influenced uh, by AI than uh, some other ones. And uh, retail industry is one of the most uh, uh, most affected industry or or most influenced industry, if I say so, uh, from AI perspective. If you just look at uh, AI and where it can be used, you know. It has it has the application almost in all facets of retail industry. Whether you go uh, back end at, at supply chain, the supply chain has a great implication. Uh, you go to on the front end from customer perspective. Uh, whether you are looking at customer uh, customization, prediction of which one which uh, things will sell more, and where to do uh, shelf space. I mean, where do you put? Uh, which item where do you put on what part of shelf to increase the sales? Uh, how uh, you know how uh, uh, you know you can improve customer uh, experience, uh, fraud management. Uh, you know if you are looking at let's say clothes or something, then you are look you can bring even visual aspects where you can customer can actually visualize this on how it will look things will look when they are doing online. Um, you know there are various aspects uh, where it can it can come in uh, whether it is payment whether it is uh, uh, you know multiple other areas it is already about 23 billion dollar industry when you look at ai in uh, retail uh, uh, you know sector and it is just going to grow more and more uh, we thought today's uh, e uh, session we will uh, take uh, since we have uh, dr indranil mitra with us who is who has 20 years of experience in uh, in uh, data driven industry and uh, we would we would really want to pick his experience his, his brain and uh, really look at how the industry uh, uh, what has happened in the industry and how it is going to evolve then we have dr mihir parik who is who has done his phd in uh, artificial intelligence so we'll pick his brain uh, in uh, you know his view of where AI is being used in retail industry and where it will go. And then Abhishek and me uh, will look at the legal issues and try to see how things things actually work out. Uh, with this, uh, my first uh, uh, question really, uh, my opening batsman, Dr. Indranil Mitra, can you, can you tell, you know, I know, you know, we have discussed this before. I am very excited by what you have done in the last 20 years. And some of your your recent projects, right? Uh, I want you know you to tell the audience about what you've been doing and what exactly you know where AI has been used in in retail industry technology. You can go a little broader than AI if you need to. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Parikh, and uh, thank you for having me here and giving me this opportunity. Uh, uh, that's a very interesting subject that you picked pick today and uh, uh, it feels great to speak on that because uh, for the last few years of my career it has been focused mostly translating the things that we have studied in our colleges and universities how they are making a change in the society or in the business area to specifically speak about how AI will change uh, life for the retailers and also people who like us who go to buy i see uh, we have advanced from 
the likes of business intelligence and dashboards, which are internal consumption for the businesses earlier. Now it's a more of a merging of the customer with the business. In 2020, uh, so I'm, I was also part of Nomura Research Institute, which was, is one of the leading think tanks uh, and consulting organization from Japan. So we have done a lot of work in this area. Uh, what the recent trends are. So working with Gartner, working with some of the leading research agencies, I think augmented reality in retail. I mean, they, uh, we follow our stars on Instagrams and people who are fashionable. Uh, if, if I just speak about the textile part, how cool it will be to just take a picture of that and put it on yourself in an environment and check out yourself that how you look in that dress. So uh, visual analytics using AI to check your physical, physical dimensions and also how you look in different colors of that particular dress will be so cool to have and uh, check it out. Even if before you buy, you know how you're going to look at it. You don't even need to go to the trial room. With Amazon uh, driving most of the online commerce these days, besides we have a lot of other different industries. I'm from India, so we have e-commerce platforms galore, but uh, Amazon leads most of the way. And uh, what, what is the thing that we miss? So when we buy on a commerce platform, uh, we still have to wait for some time to get those things delivered to us, right? I mean, the physical fulfillment that happens when you get a new product, a new phone or a new iPad or a new dress or a new shoe, uh, has to wait for some time. Don't you think it would be so cool that uh, if the supply chain was so adapt that it will come and deliver to you within two hours? And it is picking up in some of the areas where they are trying this in uh, the Northern American region, some parts in Europe, they're trying in some of the Indian cities. It's still a work in progress, but uh, artificial intelligence is driving the supply chain. It is uh, getting the goods from the nearest warehouse and getting it delivered to you. Uh, the other thing which is happening, we've seen recommendation engines. We go to e-commerce sites, you go into retail stores. In retail stores, we have people who know about whatever is there in the store and uh, they can recommend you. But uh, how about if all that shop in past this area or in that store? And what would you like next? Somebody gives you that recommendation on your phone, or maybe a robot which is there inside the store, which knows you by name because it understands and recognizes your face. Uh, you may or may not log in through uh, a customer ID. It could just log in through your face and it can talk to you. And maybe if VP goes to a uh, big store and says, Hello, Mr. Parik, uh, how was how is the day today and uh, what do you want to buy today? And uh, last time you bought all these things, do you think you need something like that or shall I guide you to some other aisle of the store? So a conversational bot, I'm sure a lot of us have seen that in videos or maybe even in real life. Uh, these are humanoid robots and they're very cute to look at and also they're super fast and super intelligent. I mean, the machine intelligence. When you merge uh, AI uh, with a lot of digital intervention put together and they come to the aid of the customer who may not be as uh, conversant with maybe AI, maybe digital, maybe uh, doesn't know that, right? You could just, uh, you can bring even a change to that person's perception of the store, of the uh, whole ambience, of the shopping experience. That is what retail is all about, right? So, and also, what you buy uh, on the e-commerce platform, how good would it have been if you could actually try out some of the things? It is not only trying your dress, but suppose it is a new bike, or you want to uh, check out few of the new PlayStation games. Uh, I mean, using augmented reality, which understands your preference, the data overlay on top of it, can make that a very immersive uh, experience. So uh, we worked with some big Japanese auto giants 
uh, well, the latest releases from last year and even this year is being tested on a VR environment, or we call it ex extended reality uh, systems, where you can test drive maybe the no new Toyota Wellfire. Put in your preferences there that you want to drive fast, you want to change gears, you want to do mountains. So all of these things happening across the retail industry, where hyper individual recommendations where uh, they understand or recognize your face every time you go to the store or you log in through a uh, face recognized app all these things are coming together and also then why the payment system should be left behind and also with this pandemic happening globally now people uh, will be a little wary of touching uh, generic systems like an iPad, which is used for maybe ordering your food or maybe uh, passing your card through. Why can't I just digitally transfer it? I, mean, just, I should just uh, take my phone on top of a system. It should just scan it from there, uh, maybe with an OTP, maybe contactless. There's so many things also which are happening in the areas of uh, direct financial uh, evolution of payment systems. I am advising a couple of companies, in fact, working very closely with them, which are working in India and Southeast Asia in changing the way uh, people do their payments. In fact, suppose you're short of cash and you need to buy a thing. How about an instant loan? I mean, I know we have credit cards and stuff, but there are people who still want to buy it. Uh, maybe you don't have a credit card uh, with you at that moment. Uh, or maybe you're buying a couple of things together. How about a small loan which could just go through the, the payment cycle immediately? I mean, they have all the KYC requirements which are there. They can quickly do a eligibility check and uh, voila, you can have your loan and uh, the vendor can get that and you can buy your product and go. So I think there's a huge landscape shift which is happening in the retail industry from payments to delivery to supply chain to personalization to recommendation for individual buyers uh, and it's all driven by digitalization and when there is digitalization there's a lot of data which is emitted all throughout the system or, or all throughout the environment of that retail domain and uh, Things like AI, data science, machine learning are crunching that data at astronomical speeds and coming up with insights which was not seen even a couple of years back. They can correlate your Facebook posts with your likes and dislikes. I mean, there's so many things which are happening. So I think uh, today's topic is very relevant. touching individual lives and as days go by I think uh, there will be more and more uh, adapting to such situations and we'll adapt unconsciously because uh, uh, when we use a Amazon app or a Google Pay TV, it's become natural right so we just talk to them or we just interact with them so that is the power of systems which are intelligent and uh, as they learn more and more about us, more and more and more data inputs that they get, I think the systems are emerging at very fast speeds. And the AI thing that we speak about uh, will cross human intelligence, but we'll still need humans to drive them so that uh, there are less of biases and ethics. I think the other rest of the panelists will speak about. But from my experience, uh, in the last two decades that I've spent in the area of consulting business and specifically on the data science area, I've seen a tremendous evolution. And um, the whole thing of data science, the data scientists and uh, the front looking uh, effect on industries, not only retail across the value chain is immense. And because retail touches individual lives and it's an individual experience at most of the times, I think, as uh, Mr. Parikh was saying, uh, it it is humongous. The, uh, the things which are coming in are humongous. 
it was just a few examples that I gave you. But uh, as days go by, and uh, if you get interested listening to all of us, when you do your own research, you will see how things are changing and how fast they're changing. Thank you, Indranil. I think it is it is very interesting uh, to hear about it. And you know what you were saying reminded me of my discussion with one of the retail uh, uh, e-commerce uh, company, and uh, we were just chatting. And uh, you know he was telling that look, while we are retail company, so, uh, you know going future, we look more and more like technology companies, uh, less like a retail company. Uh, whether it is e-commerce, you know, the delivery differentiation, which, you know, Flipkart started with saying that, hey, I can deliver you very next day, very fast, is kind of diminishing. Uh, differentiation with brand anyway, uh, to some extent, uh, you know, people who have top brand, like whether it's an Amazon, Flipkart, Walmart, you know, whichever retail chain you pick up, the Reliance, all of them have brand. Um, what is going to be the key differentiator and key, uh, you know, uh, factor which will, which will kind of give a leadership position to one retail chain or one e-commerce or another really is technology. And this is what he was telling me. Um, he says, look, unless I am on top of my game, you know, uh, in technology, I won't survive. I mean, that was the position uh, they, have, they have taken. And in all this technology, and he rightly said, AR, VR will play a role. So will, uh, you know, drones will play a role in delivery. You know, 5G will play a role in getting the experience for e-commerce industry, you know, to do this virtual sitting at home. But the key aspect, uh, which is going to be is, is AI. AI will drive everything behind it. And, you know, AI, the good part is that AI, actually, the value of AI increases when you when you tie up with all the other industry, you know, whether it's a blockchain, industry, it's a drone industry, it's a AR, VR industry, all these actually fits into the AI. So AI will actually drive a lot of things. And, you know, the winner really is, will be the companies which will be able to use the data to pull out insights uh, and serve the customer better, who are able to save cost because of supply chain, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, improvement, optimization, or right prediction of what they want so that they reduce number of, uh, uh, you know, waste, which is, which is there uh, in their shops or in their warehouses, or fraud prevention. Right, that's where also a lot of AI is used to determine where the frauds are happening and where to plug in. You know, industry, what I understood is, you know, I was talking to some other client and their business is in fraud prevention in retail industry. And they are saying that it's a, it's a you know, multi-billion dollar industry by itself because three, two to three percent of the revenue, right, loss is because of the fraud and the theft, which happens in the stores. Um, you know, then you look at, uh, uh, you know, whichever area you look at, we feel that the AI will create the differentiation. That's what you kind of you jumped in on what is saying, uh, you know, what is happening right now. Uh, but uh, let me now go to Mihir. Mihir, uh, do, you, do you give a little bit, can you tell a little bit more about your experience and where AI will be used in, uh, in retail industry? Yes, uh, you can a little louder, but you are fine. Okay. Um, see, a retail, as you said, is a huge industry. It's a six trillion dollar industry in the U.S., which is twice the size of healthcare industry, right? And we have seen a huge upheaval in the industry in the last ten years, especially uh, with the growth of e-commerce and a lot of new technology coming into picture and and people's behavior changing about uh, purchasing product. Uh, all of those has come together at the same time. And then on top of that, in the last few months, we have seen COVID-19 creating a big wreck, havoc, um, a huge blow to the retail industry. So if those retailers are not looking at technology, it's about time they should start looking at technology. And the good thing about retail is that increasingly, Physical retail and electronic commerce are merging, right? There's a convergence happening. 
And we talked about all this technology, robotics and sensors and cameras and AR, VR and, and analytics. As a matter of fact, even smart mirrors are there, which integrates with what you see in the mirror with what you should see in the mirror, kind of like AR, VR stuff. And then on top of that, we have artificial intelligence. Now, a lot of things that Indranil had talked about was really very, very fascinating. You know, think about in-store experience. We always like, you know, e-commerce is good, you can do it, but going to a store is a different experience. How can we use AI to augment that experience? And, you know, uh, Indranil gave a lot of good examples about finding a product. For example, Lowe's, it's a hardware store in the U.S., and hardware has so many products and you are not really used to, uh, if you're a house owner or dealing with any kind of hardware related project, you are not used to know the name of those product and things like that, right? So how can you find a product which can be hundreds of products uh, similar to that in a store? So Lowe's is using what they call low bot in order to assist uh, customers identify or look at the product, the right product. Uh, Macy's is also using app-based uh, application to find a product. Another is product advisory. We, you know, uh, Indranil talked about, you know, making fitting with your what you like and whether it fits you or not. There are a lot of product advisory AIs are coming. Whereas, for example, Sephora, which is a cosmetic line, which looks at, you know, how do you mix and match different cosmetic colors? And they have a AI called Color IQ, uh, which helps you do that. Ole um, is also provides skin advisory and matches mm -hmm. your screen, skin with the right product. Um, Uniqlo also has a, a AI tool called uh, a U Mode, uh, a U Mood, which kind of looks at your preferences and things like that. So customer preference is another area where AI can help in in-store experience. And of course, Amazon Go, we talked about, you know, no checkout lines, no cashier, all of those, which will make the customer in-store experience uh, very very, uh, very uh, nice. And people would like to go to those kind of stores where they can pick up uh, the material. But I will also want to talk about some other side of uh, use of AI in retail. Yes, customer relationship and uh, customer interface is extremely important in retail, but there are other aspects where AI can help. Uh, I'll break it down into two areas. One is what we call chain-wide operation. Um, where you have a, a retail chain and you want to look at, you know, the entire operation in a place. And the second is a um, store management aspect, uh, using AI for the store management. So first of all, in chain wide operation, first is determining the right location of store. Where do you put your store? Which area is the one which is going to give you the best return? You know, if you think about retail, uh, a lot of success of retail, and that also goes for not just uh, selling or consumer retail, but also goes with even restaurants, right? Which is kind of like a food retail, right? Uh, where do you put your store or restaurant? Uh, how uh, is going to determine a huge part in the success of that store? So where do you uh, locate your store? Uh, there are so many different factors uh, plays into this. Uh, as a matter of fact, a uh, long time back, 20 years back, I did a consulting for uh, a chain which, want, which was growing very fast and wanted to identify where to put the next store. So we created a, a mathematical operational management model, a predictive model, which looks at 19 different factors that go into predicting a store location. Now, even you have a lot more factors, and when you have all these dynamics going, playing out macro level, micro level, you combine that and then use that intelligence using AI to identify the right location of the store. Then, of course, demand prediction. You know, demands is very uh, fugitive a lot of times, especially in the fashion industry, especially in 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 in, in, in drugs or or uh, uh, pharmacy area. So, for example, Walmart is looking at the spread of flu. So if you look at the spread of the flu, based on that, you can predict the demand of a product that you need to carry to help people with the flu, right? All kind of medicines. So demand prediction, inventory management, Walmart is using uh, robots and AI to dynamically monitor inventory. 
uh, and uh, then integrating that information with suppliers. So you improve supplier relationship, you integrate better with the manufacturing, you integrate better with the uh, uh, real-time knowledge uh, that you can pass on to the suppliers. Uh, GE has a very interesting software called Brilliant Manufacturing, which kind of uses this knowledge to integrate into uh, manufacturing. So you have AI, which is not just into uh, retail and in-store customer experience, but also integrating with the dynamically monitoring uh, inventory, predicting demand, and then integrating that with supplier. And then, of course, we talked about you know delivery. Uh, how can we uh, you know deliver faster? Indranil gave example of about you know if you want to buy a product and if the product is not available on the shelf, uh, you will be disappointed. However, as you said, you know, how do we now look at drones or as a matter of fact, even actual products which you go to store for experience and then you don't have to carry that product home. You could have drones or other delivery mechanism. So by the time you go home, the product is delivered to you. And to do that, all kind of networking logistic uh, algorithm you have to run in the back end to manage uh, those delivery preferences and delivery uh, schedules. Uh, and that where AI can also help. The other part however, that I want to talk about is the store management. You know, store management is also very important because in-store experience directly deals with the store management. So first aspect is product selection. What products to put on shelf and what products not to put on shelf. You can't put everything because shelf is a limited space. It's a very, very expensive real estate. So how do you figure out what product to put on shelf and what product not to put on shelf? At the same time, you can co coordinate that with the certain time of the day where in the morning, what type of product should be out in the shelf and in the evening, what kind of product should be out on the shelf based on the, all kind of the demands and, and, and usage and all that. Then product placement, where to put on shelf? Should you put it at the eye level? Should you put it at the lower level? Where do you put what kind of products? And you integrate that with, of course, they always been doing that, but AI will significantly improve that um, process. Then you can have app-based customized pricing and discounting. Um, currently we go to store, everybody has the same price and this price remains same for almost a week in most cases. Now that's not the right way to deal with that. How do you dynamically adjust pricing, uh, discounting, and even customize to individual user level. And that's where AI can also come and help. Uh, another aspect is customer flow management. You don't want everybody going at the same time to the store and crowding the store. So how do you manage the customer flow? How do you provide customer information who is going out for shopping and trying to go to three different stores to figure out which store he or she should go to first in order to minimize the crowding in that. Or other times where it can advise that don't go at this time because it's crowded, go at some other time. So those kind of dynamic uh, uh, things uh, can help. Even parking locations, uh, AI can help with the parking uh, your car in a, in a, uh, in a, in a mall. Uh, order pickup, uh, Zara has a streamlined order pickup, is using AI to uh, streamline the order pickup. Theft reduction, Weber, you talked about that. So there are a lot of store management AI can come into play. So in-store customer experience is absolutely must, but there are many other areas where AI is coming to improve uh, and help retail establishment uh, take advantage of this different technology. And the last point I want to talk about some of the issues that this may create. One is the differentiation. Weibo, you talked about, you know, uh, technology is, is the differentiation. But as we all have a technology, is there any other differentiation? Can we really create a differentiation? Are we going to convert towards average, right? Uh, another aspect is, of course, a uh, lot of people work in a retail setting. So how that is going to affect uh, workforce uh, in terms of skilling, reskilling those workforce. Uh, so that aspect uh, we have to also look into. And there also AI can help uh, not just reduce workforce, but it can make workforce more efficient. Uh, liability issues, discrimination issues, the customer abuse or predatory behavior uh, by AI, which is, um, of course, is not emotional, but it can also come into play. So a lot of those uh, aspects of AI is going to come 
into retail sector. And it's very interesting uh, to look at all those things and, and, and think about the future uh, of retail uh, is very bright in my view, although a lot of people are discounting it. So over to you, Eva. Thank you, Mir. I will come back to you on future of retail. It's a very interesting, uh, you know, as you said, it's it's a it's a big uh, it's a big uh, uh, industry. So you know where the future will lie is very interesting. I'll come back to you. But you know some of the things which you said is very interesting, right? And in fact, it's very exciting, not just interesting. Uh, just to think that when I go to the store today, I go and if I want to find something. In fact, just yesterday I went to grocery and you know I had to find some some food and you know i had to go some 10 aisles just to know where it is and i couldn't find it because maybe they were they run out of it or they didn't have it you know imagine if i could just put it in and say hey tell me where it is and i can just go and pick it up right the amount of time it will say will be amazing or you know sometimes i do buy a thing which i don't want and this is a common complaint and uh, today uh, you know i i buy something which i just my eye falls or you know like it and i buy it you know what you call impulsive buying right but uh, that is very less in a sense uh, you know it's not it's not uh, you know too much inside i buy occasionally you know impulsive buy but when something is actually in front of my eyes what i actually want the impulse buying will increase and there is a lot of uh, science and technology behind how the how do you ensure that you get benefit of the impulsive buying right so that is the other area where a lot of uh, ai and technology is being used. if i may add one more point here when you said impulsive buying there is also a concept called buyer's remorse you know you buy thing and you take it home and then you remorse about it right hmm. now that really affects retail also right because that affects people's thinking about it. So how do you impulse buying is great but provided you want to make sure it's impulse buying towards something that you forgot and you want it Right, as opposed to something which is really nice looking and you want to have it and you remorse by the time you reach home. So that's also a very interesting concept where AI can help. Absolutely. Um, the other other points, so the point what I think we all be talking about means that there is a lot of data generated. Right? Um, you know, AI works on data and unless I have a data, I can't, I can't, AI can't predict, you know, where, which shelf to put, I, I, you know, uh, you know, how, how can I give customization? How can AI give custom customization to a particular person, right? Unless AI can recognize a face, they will not know what exactly, what exactly, uh, you know, who the exactly that person is, right? And I think Indranil was talking about uh, payment, contactless payment system. And, you know, I've been reading about it saying that people in future will go to the stores pick up things and just walk out. There won't be any cash counters, right? Because the moment you put things in your cart, you will automatically get billed. So that will be as automatic as, as possible. And these are a lot of technologies which go behind to implement is to give a customer requires data, right? So, so data becomes very critical. And there is also two kinds of data. You have anonymized data, right? Where, which talks about, you know, you talked about where the flu's, flu is, right? Now that's an anonymized data. You're looking at data where at the community level, at the geography level, right? As opposed to when you want to customize something for, let's say, uh, Indra, Indra Neil or Mihir, right? Uh, you want data particularly regarding that particular person, right? So it's then no longer customized, uh, they're no longer anonymized, right? Because you want to customize it. You also want to, for example, you want to predict what he's likely to buy so that I can give him a particular recommendation right you want to know his or his behavior and that's where data becomes very critical and more non-personalized or, no, or more personal data you have better you are in order to serve the customer right and then that that definitely gets the privacy and data protection issue which we, we should go into and the other aspect which i i want to talk about which you have not yet talked about is pricing Right. You you did mention about pricing on how to price and stuff like that. But the another interesting part is that a lot of time your real time pricing depends on what how your competitor prices. Right. Uh, today, you can't really do retail trade because, you know, you don't have idea of how the competitor has, has has given the price or you can't predict how the pricing will work from competitors perspective. Right now with AI technology, you can predict how the computer is going to price. Right. 
uh, you can predict how the markets are going to react to the price. So your pricing strategies will improve. Now, if you are using computers data, because a lot of data of computers also are in public domain. So you take the data and you start learning about competition. You start, you start uh, making your behavior based on how competitor is going to behave, right? That creates a very interesting issues on competition law, right? Whether, 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 you know, am I conniving with the competitor to go and pretend to the uh, go and do something with the husband uh, with the customer for example i i and computer my technology and computer technology is synced up together which tracks price movement if a computer increases the price my price also gets increased right now today it happens but there's a lag and there's a market for there's no talking but tomorrow with technology right uh, you may lose that that uh, differentiation and it may nearly be simultaneous or together right so you can you can program your technology in a way where it can create uh you know competition law issue uh, similarly price getting, gouging predatory pricing all of those you're right with. correct so so you know those also bring a lot of legal issues and with this i want to go and have appreciate talk about some of the legal issues which you see in ai especially in respect to retail industry I think maybe we can look at this from three broad perspectives, like three main key areas where these issues may arise from. One was a subject which Mihir has mentioned as well, which is a common question that always comes up with exposure or growth of AI, is the question of liability. And always someone always has this doubt that with more automation coming into business, with AI being involved in every stage, even in the retail industry, where, for example, you have either robots in the stores who are helping you with, you know, directing you to what you can purchase or if it's a tool that allows you to try on something that is an augmented reality or an AR VR sort of platform which allows you to do that. The key question that always comes up is at the end of the day if something goes wrong who's going to be responsible for this and I think this is an issue also which is a very new area and we talk about how law is looked at this. I think the key question has always been that how is AI independently treated under law? Is it an independently recognized entity wherein AI has an independent recognition separate from its creator or is it whether the person who has created the AI in themselves who are always going to be held responsible for the actions of the AI and what the final outcome of what an AI does is. Now based on what's happened in the recent past there are around two three ways in which this is looked at and the first way in which I guess is the most common one that people bring up is because a person programming and creating the program that goes into an AI and putting in input controls and commands in the way in which it needs to be function, it functions, that person at the end of the day needs to be responsible for the final outcome or actions of the AI. And if something goes wrong, they are the initial creator of the AI and they are the ones who have to be held responsible. That's one way in which it's looked at in which it's treated. The second way in which it's looked at also and is that it's not a direct let's say result of what the programming was in the first place where as we all know ai in themselves tend to evolve on a day-to-day -day basis based on you know the information that they get the data that's plugged in and the interactions that they have with consumers so it's not always a fact that a programmer when they're creating the ai at the first step would know that this could be a reasonable outcome that can suddenly arise at a later stage and the question is that can someone be held responsible for an outcome which was not clear to them when the initial programming in itself was happening. And the test, at least what happens in that stage and what's normally looked at is if there's some form of negligence, an equivalence of negligence when it comes to the programmer where they did not think of something and there is a connection between the outcome that finally happens, there is also a way in which it looked at that the programmer was negligent while they were programming the AI and in that form they can be held responsible or liable through that way. And the final let's say less or lesser developed way in which it's looked at is an AI is treated independently as an entity and it held, needs to be held directly responsible separate from the program programmer for its own actions and I think the key question here which is also a doubt that needs to be addressed is if you independently hold an AI responsible for its actions what are the punishments that you can meet out to such you know artificial intelligence entities because that is again a question as to how do you hold an AI independently responsible is there a form of having criminal penalties against an AI? Maybe a few ways in which that's looked at is you cut off access of data for some time and you don't allow it to grow for a 
particular phase which can be looked at as a penal action against the ai so these are broad concepts and ways in which liability is looked at when it comes to artificial intelligence and i think just the second thing we can look at which i know all the panelists and speakers have brought up is the question of data which i think is something that you also mentioned where a key element for growth of ai and how an ai can develop on a day to day basis is access to data and i think privacy is a debate that has grown on a day to day basis worldwide where more people are being becoming concerned as to how you know specifically their personal data is being used and i think an example of the well, one of the re most recent developments which sort of tried to address this was the gdpr which the european union implemented the new privacy law where they tried to sort of bring in processing also by automated means into the entire aegis of the privacy law itself where it says that for an artificial intelligence entity which is processing data independent of any human intervention there are certain requirements under law also that you have to ensure is plugged into the programming for the entity and i think the way in which privacy law maybe can be looked at when it comes to ai is you can have policies which programmers themselves need to sort of put in beforehand to ensure that you know the information that's being collected one the person who's to whom the with whom the interaction is happening knows that this is the information that's being collected and the second key element also is that they are agreeing to provide this information where i think the issue of consent is always a very common point that comes up when we talk about privacy and i think obtaining their consent for collecting the data is another key element which needs to be sort of decided and the final thing is also informing them or giving them knowledge as to the various ways in which it's going to be used and this is again a new sort of development where privacy law is trying to sort of factor all of this in and ensure that you know it stays in line with technology and i think that has always been the most interesting thing about this where technology is always thought to be two steps ahead of the law and i think the law needs to sort of evolve along with that at the same time and also understand that there may be diverse issues that come up so i think these were two broad sort of topics or areas where legal issues may arise and i think if there's anything else that you feel may be relevant web i think you can thank you thank you abhishek uh, privacy and data protection is is very uh, important and uh, critical i think there's a question also from tanvir um uh, his question is will customer consumer be able to restrict or have any say on the data collected about their habits likes and dislikes and uh, you know often often that uh, uh, the situation where who whether as a consumer can i control what data i provide becomes very very important the answer is yes under gdpr you can uh, under indian law today Uh, as it stands really no but uh, uh, because unless it's a sensitive personal information which is basically nothing but health uh, health related or financial related or password or biometric uh, then you can but uh, in other situation you may not be able to restrict completely um, but uh, with the new privacy law which is in in pipeline if that comes up then you may be able to control what data you want to give but very interesting aspect is that you can control what data you are giving but you know to some extent you can even control data which to whom you have given right uh, they have because if they have collected from other parties or otherwise but you may not be in a position to control if you are not given any data that doesn't mean that there is no data out there about you which they can't have so that's the other aspect which you know i'll just uh, come back to but the point i'm trying to make is that once you give the data once data is with them then how to use the data once it is anonymized uh, you may not have a control um how to use the data when it is non anonymized when it is personal you will still have control so so yes the answer is you can you can you can have uh, some kind of control over data collected uh but you know profiling aspect right you know when you give a data you don't know how the data really can be used one as an individual versus one as as a as a whole or data which you have given along with that the other aspects of data which can be collected from from uh, you know the digital surroundings right you know digital web for which you have not generated it's not your data so you can't control so in other ways you know to put put a put what language with mihir use right example which mihir use right um, walmart has collected that you know there is a flu pandemic in this particular area and you said that you stay in that particular area right so your data which you have given is that you stay in that particular area now 
Walmart knows that there is a flu pandemic in that area, so you have a probability of getting a flu. Uh, if you if you visited a doctor's uh, premises, let's say, and uh, you know that particular information was given by hospital saying that you know here is a visitors and somebody has come by name of so and so, and Walmart can make one plus one and say, hey, you know, I know this guy has a flu because there's a pandemic. He went to a doctor and he stays in the area where there is a lot of pandemic going on, right? Or or the flu going on. I'm I should not use the word pandemic, but just the flu going on, right? So you may not be in a you may be able to control data which you have given it to them. Uh, but you may not realize that when that data, when used with other data which is publicly available, what will be the implication of that? And this is where, whether it's a digital profiling or others, is something where I think uh, uh, things are still, the law will still evolve to that extent, right? I don't think it is completely evolved. The other aspect which I want to talk about is on uh, industrial espionage and, and competition law, right? We, we, which I just discussed before uh, I asked a question to Abhishek. Um, you know, again, I was just I was just telling that you know, a lot of information is publicly available, right? If an employee of a competitor has gone and visited a particular company, and if that is a public information because a lot of people log in the visitors. It's not necessarily a private information, right? Um, you know, whether it is through using using a, uh, a particular uh, app or someone, right? You know, if somebody has met someone and that person has put them on LinkedIn, right? So now you know that this person has just connected LinkedIn recently, right? So looking at LinkedIn analysis, you know who are those people who would have met or who would have connected with that person, right? So now, the person, a computer's employee has gone and visited and he's a senior guy and he has visited a particular company, then you know that some kind of deal is likely to happen. Now you compile that with some of the other data points you get, whether you know that that company has gone and signed an agreement with someone else to procure certain technology or certain things, right? Now you know that that particular technology would be by this particular company because this guy went and met that company. So you... The, a lot of public data which is available right which which is which is around there by itself is innocuous uh, by itself you can't make any sense out of it but when i combine that and when i put intelligence to it what i get is uh, in information which is actually a confidential information which is possibly a secret information which i have not given and that means that Certain things about computer which they don't want to say, which was confidential, is now public because you can now make, uh, you can connect different different pieces and you can make intelligence out of it, right? So this is where the technology is going to be used, and that will give another uh, question from uh, from legal perspective, right? Should there be a restriction, right? Should there be restriction on on should the uh, trade secrets law evolve in a in a different way? Where should I allow people not to use the technology so that they can come to know confident information about the competitors or should should certain things be considered that look as long as it was taken from public information it is fine and you know even though earlier those informations were available uh, you couldn't make much out of it now with technology you can create uh, you can recreate a confident information but then that's something you need to live with right so those kind of discussions or or uh, issues which are likely to come up. We discuss competition law, right? Now, the Competition Commission actually will start need to think more on how this this uh, technology will will work with our with competitors, and will that create an issue, either by by fixing the price in a manner in which there is no actually talking between two competitors. They are not coming in and talking and trying to fix something at the at the at the with the intention to kind of. Uh, uh, create issues for customers, but that is happening automatically because of the technology, right? Without any pre-planning because the AI takes a decision what should be the price and AI decides it's not a company which is deciding and AI decides based on certain information which they gather. So that uh, is the another thing which Competition Commission will need to look into and evolve on how they interpret, uh, you know, uh, anti-competitive laws. So a lot of those issues also, I think, will come into picture, and we will need to we will need to see, you know, how things things progress. Uh, with this, uh, uh, you know, I would like to go back uh, uh, to Mihir first now, 
And Mihir, can you tell if I have, and then I will go to uh, Indranil uh, also. Uh, Mihir, can you tell, let's say if I fast forward 10 years uh, down, right? Let's say it's 2030, right? How will retail, AI in retail look like? How will retail industry change because of AI? You know, if you just had to put gaze in the crystal ball and see, what do you see? The same question I will ask Indranil after you. Uh, but then don't replay this video 10 years down the road and say you're totally wrong. Uh, it come back and haunt you. But I think retail is, as you said, is absolutely going to get integrated with technology. All kinds of technology, AR, VR, robots, uh, AI, uh, drones, uh, 5G, everything, right? So what it's going to do at the end of the day, it's going to become more customer centric. At the same time, the back end is going to be automated, totally automated. We have seen that happening with factories. A uh, lot of factories are automated, uh, as a matter of fact, completely automated factories now. Um, but here we are dealing with human. So we need to have some human element to it. And I just recently was just browsing through a book I had to finish reading. Very interesting, Girl Decoded. Um, it talks about how AI can monitor and understand your behavior and your features and your, your uh, body language. Now, when that technology gets evolved, that will come into play, right? So what you would have, you have a human being there, uh, not to manage inventory, not to manage as a cashier, nothing like that, but just your personal assistant when you walk into a store. And as a matter of fact, your experience with retail will start the time you leave your home to go to a store. It will not when you enter the store. Right. While you are in the car, uh, you will uh, you will be connected into this personal assistant who will be talking with you what you want, how you want it, what do you like, what your preferences are, what you are here. Are you just here to come in and get something and get out like you go to a grocery store where you want to pick up milk, you want to pick up this uh, orange juice and walk out uh, in those case immediately those things can be made available to you. Uh, at that point of time, or are you there to just browse and try out, you know, kind of going to weekends on a mall? So it will look at the kind of behavior you want to expect from the in-store experience. And based on that, the entire store customer experience will be designed, right? It will also look at your preferences on the day of the uh, week or uh, time of the uh, day. Based on that, it can also customize total experience for you which will eventually lead to idea is to increase the sales right yeah and reduce the cost there are only two ways you can make profit one is you increase the sales and reduce the cost and on both hand ai is going to come in play but you can only make customer happy and happy customer will lead to loyalty and which will eventually lead to long-term uh, sales uh, so that kind of behavior is going to be there. Only one part that really bothers me is the discrimination part. And you talked about a little bit, you touched on it, digital profiling, right? But to me, I think it's going to be a huge factor. Is my experience going to be uh, based on discrimination that I face as a society, in the society? Or is it based on um, what I really like? Right. And we already see those kind of things happening uh, in many other cases where AI gets used and AI comes in and, and, and does the discriminative behavior. And of course, AI doesn't have a, um, uh, you know, emotion. Um, but how do you bring emotion into AI, which makes it more interesting? And I do see it 10 years down the road that is also coming into play because a lot of um, uh, retail experience is also emotional experience. And when you bring AI into emotion, you are not just looking at just money. Uh, you are also looking at making somebody happy, and that's where I think AI is going to significantly change uh, uh, retail uh, industry. Thank you, Mihir. I think you you made a very important uh, statement, and that's something which is uh, relevant in, in in today's world, especially with uh, you know. Uh, Black Lives Matters movement, which is going on in the US and which is actually caught up in different parts of the world, right? Um, you know, you see whether it's a racism, inequality, gender bias, something which is a which has become a big social issue, right? It's a society issue, right? It's it's an issue which has been there, and somewhere 
you know, if that data goes into AI, it may actually come up in the AI, right? And, uh, you know, it can actually increase, you know, it can be rich versus poor kind of a thing or uh, have versus have nots or people who are more presentable versus people who are not pre well dressed, right? It can come in multiple ways. And the, the, the biases, the, the racism can actually build in to a level where 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 this actually may end up creating legal issues for the stores and for for the industry which is which is coming up right whether it is intentional or not right it may it may just come in and that is something which can bring liability too and that's where i think role of ethics because there may not be any actual law right now in place the role of ethics while developing the ai um, algorithms also the data by selecting the data and trying to negate the racism aspect or bias aspect right will become very very important and you know a lot of times either the industry will need to self-regulate so that uh, you know they, they kind of stamp out some of these unwanted things or the government will have to come with a regulation to kind of prevent it from happening so this is this is something which which definitely is a very important thing and you know 10 years down the line the one thing which i would like to see is you know, making sure that AI is rid of biases and racism aspect, you know, which people do you differentiate because, you know, it's very difficult to train human, right? Unless they are trained from from their birth, right? To 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 train them or retrain them after they are they are grown up with different set of mind, right? But AI, it is possible, and that's where I think there is a there is a you know a very interesting. Uh, uh, play where you can actually remove some of those aspects of bias which is there in human mind you can remove in AI though it's, it's going to be tough. Uh, with this uh, Indranil I would want to come to you we have just about a minute or two uh, if you can want to say some last words on on future future of retail. Uh, I think the point that uh, Mihir and you touched upon, so uh, I was fortunate enough to be a part of a program globally called Responsible AI. Across industries, more so in retail, where uh, these biases that you speak about, which happens in this black box AI systems are finally getting opened up. You really know and the biases that you have to root out of these systems, uh, maybe of color, maybe of creed, maybe of the way, maybe your body weight. So, uh, Responsible AI and ethical AI. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of uh, the just generation Z, as we call them. They're very interested where the product originated from. So putting in a blockchain kind of immutability with AI, uh, we uh, these people don't buy things which are disputed. I mean, maybe a diamond, maybe a product which originated out of a country which is under dispute. So. Besides that, how that is going to change, that's already changing. I think AI will completely shift. It's a paradigm shift. It will, uh, the physical stores, their leases will shorten in the days to come. People will just go to visit as I think Mihir was talking about. They'll go to see and do some customization of the products that they have already chosen in some website or some e-commerce platform. There'll be less of product and more of production there will be more converts than conversions i mean i will start want to start a relationship with the product but what do i do with that i may buy i may not buy depending on uh, the data that is available people will start pushing retailers the retailers will start pushing it understanding your level of maturity with the product there will be more uh, more performance less of people i think uh, Fully contactless payments are coming in. There will be more and more uh, changes. I mean, like we have seen uh, brands which have uh, stood, which stood this test of time. I think there will be a lot of different kinds of brands which, which will come up because lifespan will become shorter and people's uh, relationship with the brand, like a Colgate or I mean, if you use a toothpaste, it's, it's a Colgate or a Pepsodent or things like that. More and more products will come into the market. Uh, just think about the type of health food or immunity boosting products which have come into the market in the last five months. Uh, we are buying things which we wouldn't have even thought about. So, and it's being pushed to you through social media, it's pushed to you through retailing platforms. So I think we are going through a very, very exciting time and uh, 
10 years uh, we'll just be visiting store to just pass our time maybe uh, i think the stores will also evolve their planograms their uh, out uh, i mean the display systems uh, i don't think there'll be a lot of more displays on shelves we'll be looking more at mirrors and smart mirrors and uh, where we put ourselves inside those mirrors and see how we look in a dress try on a suit drive a car and all things are going to be very very different than what is today Thank you, Indranil. I think you you rightly said, right? Stores will become experience center rather than a retail store to sell. Um, uh, you know, a lot of things will change and, uh, you know, I, we have run out of time. Otherwise, I could go on and on and I'm sure everybody would love to love to uh, uh, talk also on the panel. But, uh, you know, I want to I want to take a minute and, uh, you know, I see Nishit Desai also uh, on, on the or uh, with us on csap and if nishit bhai if you are around uh, you have a unique uh, experience of uh, managing a store and being a lawyer right and and possibly no one understands management of store better than you do among the panelists uh, do you want to just say a word a, min a minute or so before we end nishit nishit bhai uh, yes i think uh, 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 just a minute not too much because there has been a brilliant talk by uh, you know uh, all of you and um, uh, Mihir and, um, you know, uh, guest speaker, uh, all of you, I am so happy. Now, the way in which I think I remember uh, we had a family store, medical store, and we used to manage it. So um, uh, the way in which it used to happen, if customer came a few times, or even if it came first time, we look at the face, and intuitionally you will have 80-90% gut feel that this customer is really going to buy the product or not. I think... So human intelligence had also evolved to some extent, whereby, you know, by and large, you can predict that, you know, uh, but that was, you know, hit or miss kind of thing. Whereas if there is a, a by AI, you may have more chances of getting it right because you can connect the human intelligence along with the AI and perhaps, you know, uh, and number two, that uh, one thing which may still remain, um, you know, very important, that is wisdom. And uh, sometimes AI can also drive you in wrong direction because it all depends on data. And sometimes if there is some mess up or some mix up or something else, uh, we do not know. But then at the end of the day, I think it's going to be very interesting. As you rightly said, I think most important thing, it is what Vivek Vada said, no? Driver in the driverless. So, you, you know, who's going to drive the ethical issues? Who's going to drive the moral issues? Who's going to drive, you know, the <coughs> the the privacy issues and all those kind of thing. So I think it is in our hands. I think we have to shape the future that we want. Uh, I, with those words, I think I would thank everybody and Indranil. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Well, Bob and uh, Abhishek and uh, everyone around. It was a wonderful discussion. I'm sorry we couldn't take too many questions, looks like, but uh, next session we should be able to take some more. Thank you so much.